lost at Jenga. Hi, Dale coming to you from my garage again. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make a big Jenga game. I don't like to call it giant Jenga because I take my 2x4s and I mill up all four sides on my table saw to give these 2x4s a nice clean edge. I like working with 2x4s a lot better that way. Because of that, I don't feel comfortable calling this giant Jenga. The 2x4 blocks are a little smaller, so instead I'm calling it medium Jenga. And I know there's a lot of you out there that pay way too much for a cup of coffee that are saying, medium? What's medium? So for you guys, I'm building Grande Jenga. Not only am I going to show you how to build the Grande Jenga game, I'll also show you how to build this cool mobile storage case to easily tote your Jenga game around. Not only does it make it easy to store and transport your game, it's also the base of the game. Yep, a triple threat. Let's get going. Come on. The first thing I do is clamp a stop block to my miter saw because I'm going to be cutting these 2x4s into a lot of 9 inch blocks. And I mean a lot of them. The stop block will make this step go much, much faster and also make all the blocks be exactly the same size, which is what you want. Why am I cutting mine to 9 inches, you ask? Well, thanks for asking. It's because I'll be milling my blocks down to three inches wide and the length of each Jenga block needs to be three times longer than the width. Three inches wide means nine inches long. You have six two by fours at eight feet each to cut into a bunch of nine inch blocks. So rather than making a huge pile of blocks, get a friend to help. Each time you cut a block, Simply give it a toss to your friend where he or she can keep setting them up neatly. This is a time saver. Like I mentioned before, I love working with 2x4s. Super inexpensive and you can do a lot with them. But I'm not a fan of the rough faces, so I'm going to mill them down to have nice clean faces. I don't have a jointer or a thickness planer, so I'm going to use my table saw. I start by trimming about 3 16th of an inch off of one side of all blocks. I then move my fence and follow up with trimming the other side of all blocks to a 3 inch width. Now that the blocks are only 3 inches wide, my table saw can trim the front and back faces without having to flip the block over. This makes for less sanding. After all blocks are trimmed, each will be 9 inches long, 3 inches wide, and about 1 and a quarter inches tall. The official rules of Jenga state that there are 54 blocks. I'm actually making more than 54 to use up as much of the 2x4s as I can. This does mean, however, that I'm not following the official rules. To that I say, rules? I don't need no stinking rules. Now that I have all my Jenga blocks milled down to size, all four faces are looking great. That does leave some sharp edges though, so I'm going to route a small chamfer on all edges of each of the blocks on my router table. That should make the blocks much more comfortable in your hand. Big safety tip here. Routing all these corners on all these blocks is very repetitive and can become very monotonous very quickly. Taking your mind off the work in front of you becomes very easy. If you do start to daydream a bit, step away, clear your mind, and come back where you are really putting yourself at risk of having an accident. The final step is to sand all six sides of each block. This step is no different than all the other steps. What you do to one block, you do to all blocks. Make sure you wear a good mask as you're going to be producing a ton, and I mean a ton, a fine dust. This step without a doubt is the most time consuming. I first sanded all six sides with 150 grit and then again with 220 grit so that I could get each block really, really smooth. Milling all sides of the 2x4 certainly helped this step, but it still took a very long and very boring time. If you didn't mill and you worked with stock 2x4s, this step's even going to take a little bit longer. Sorry. Free financial tip for you. Before you start this step, go ahead and buy some 3M stock. 
because you're going to go through the sandpaper. Now that the game pieces are complete, you're going to need a way to easily store and transport the game. When bringing your Jenga game out to play, you don't want to look like this guy. Instead, you want to be like this guy. To make the carrying case, start by cutting all the pieces for a basic box. You need to make the box to leave a quarter inch or so extra space on the inside to make it easier to get the blocks in and out. I'm using three quarter inch plywood and for the size of my blocks, I've cut two sides at 25 inches by 10 and 3 quarter inches, one back at 24 and a quarter inches by 9 and a quarter inches, the bottom at 10 inches by 9 and 3 quarter inches, and the top at 10 inches by 9 and a quarter inches. You'll need to change the size of your case depending on the size of blocks you use. This will all make a lot more sense once I start to assemble the case. I'm using a piece of 3 16 inch plywood for the sliding front. To make sure that the front will slide easily, I cut a quarter inch dado into the two sides and the bottom at nine and a quarter inches from the back. I don't have a dado stack, so I run it over my table saw once, move the fence an eighth of an inch, and run it over it again. I'm using basic pocket hole joints on the case. This should be plenty strong enough and is easy and fast, so I'm going with it. I start the assembly by gluing and screwing the top to the back. I then glue and screw one side to the top and bottom. It is important that you make sure that the dados in the two sides and the bottom line up and that the top does not cover the two dados in the side. This is what's going to allow the front to slide in and out. Because this case is going to be basically carrying six 2x4s, I decided to add another piece of plywood on the bottom for added strength. So I turned the case upside down, cut out a section to size, spread some glue on it, and weighted it down to the bottom of the case. You may be asking right now, how come I spread the glue on the loose board and then turn it upside down to place on the case rather than simply spreading the glue on the bottom of the case and setting the loose piece on that? And the answer is, once the glue on the bottom has had sufficient time to dry, it's time to attach the casters. The casters actually get attached to the back of the case toward the bottom. Think suitcase here. They will not be on the ground until the case is tilted backwards. For the sliding front of the case, I'm using some 3 16 inch plywood that I have left over from another project. Using my table saw, I cut this down to 24 and a half inches tall by 9 and 3 quarter inches wide. The size of yours will depend on the size and shape of your case, which will depend on the size of your blocks. I complete the front by simply drilling a one inch hole centered toward the top. This will work as a finger hole to help slide the front on and off. Now to make the arms for the handle. Using a scrap 2x4, I cut two sections at about 28 inches long. I'll be cutting them to their final length later. Each of the two 2x4 sections I mill down on my table saw to clean up all four sides. From those, I rip them down further so that I have four one inch by one inch pieces at about 28 inches long. Now I can cut them to their final lengths. For mine, I have two at 25 and a half inches long and two at 21 and a half inches long. To take the sharp edge off, I run them through my router with the chamfer bit on my router table. I take the arms for the handle to the case and line them up on the back to what will be comfortable for my height and clamp them together. Using my drill press, I drill a hole through both pieces. This will become a pivot point. 
using my scroll saw, I round off the inside arm so that it will be able to rotate against the back of the case. Attach the bottom piece of the arm to the back of the case with glue and clamps. Do all of this again for the other arm. Now for the actual handle. Take a spare piece of plywood and cut it so that it will reach across the arms. Use a Forstner bit and drill two holes. Draw lines connecting them and then use your scroll saw to cut out the handles. Using your scroll saw or bandsaw if you have one, round off the corners. Route a nice round over on all parts of this handle as this is where you're going to be grabbing it all the time. So make sure it's comfortable for you. Attach it to the arms with glue and screws and you are done. I use spray lacquer to finish, but you can use whatever you want. Here's the finished Jenga game. This is a very easy build that anybody can do. But please don't be fooled. Don't think that easy means fast. This does take a good bit of time because of all the sanding. You could speed it up a bit if you decided not to mill all four sides like I did, or if you want to still do it and you have a jointer and a thickness planer, that would probably speed up the process a lot. If you decide to make this and you don't mill the sides, a couple things to remember. One, make sure that you watch your measurement sizes because mine is three inches by nine inches. Yours would not be that. Yours would be three and a half which means you need to make yours 10 and a half long. Also, if you don't mill the sides, you're gonna spend more time sanding. So while you save in one end, you'll take more time on the other. We've already played this multiple times and it is a lot of fun. I brought it with me on my company retreat and it was big fun there too. Please like, subscribe, and share this video. I'd appreciate it and leave some comments. I love reading all the comments. Until next time, see ya.